In the previous videos for the executor service, we saw how to submit the tasks, which is nothing but a class which implements runnable, wherein you can define the number of steps to execute in a separate thread within the run method, and how to submit those tasks using the execute method. But there is a distinct use case that we did not see. We did not see what if the task is implemented such that it wants to return a value. So, suppose I want to return a value from this run method. Uh, there is no way I can do that. Say I want to return a value of 3 all the time. I cannot do that because the runnable interface, if you go inside the runnable interface, you will see there is only a single method called run and the return type of that run method is void. So there is no way you can return a value. Go back. So there is another class called callable which is created exactly for this purpose. So instead of runnable, if we implement the callable interface, which is this, and you mention, it is generic space, so you mention which kind of variable you're going to return. So let's say here we are going to return an integer, right? Now IntelliJ is telling me to implement the method and let's delete this run method first. Now callable interface has this method called call and based on what generics you mentioned here, it will return that particular value. Now we can very easily return a particular value. Now let's say instead of always returning three, uh, let me do something fancy by saying return, always return a random number. Okay. But now if you see there is a compile time exception during the submission of the task. Right, uh, let's first just delete this for loop. We don't want to do this 100 times. Let's say we want to do it only once for now. This compile time exception is because the execute method expects a runnable task. But instead now we have a callable task and there is a separate method in the executor service to submit the callable tasks. And the method name is submit. And as you can see, you can submit even a runnable task which works the same way as triggering the execute so there is no difference there but if you want to submit a callable task then you always have to use the submit so now there is no compile time exception you have submitted the task now we have to accept the value of this method call this integer value we are, which is being returned we have to accept it in some variable so let's say the that variable is future the future type should have been integer but it is not it is of a type of class called future as the name suggests it's a placeholder for the value which will arrive sometime in the future and based on how long your call operation takes so let's say your call operation here is uh, let's say thread dot sleep i want to emulate that this operation takes a long time so if we want to sleep for three seconds here and after that calculate the run uh, calculate the next random number now here for those three seconds you can perform some other operations right you can say perform some operations i don't know what but by the time the execute service is running your callable method in a separate thread you can perform some other operations some unrelated operations here right and then once those unrelated operations are finished, it may take one second, two seconds, three seconds, whatever. After those operations are finished, you can say future dot get, right? And this will give you the actual integer result of that callable task. Now, if these operations finish very fast, let's say these operations finished within one second, right? At this point in time, your future is not ready with the value your, your task is sleeping for three seconds so by the time you do a dot get operation this method call is not finished and that is why this get operation is a blocking operation this particular call your main thread will block at this call until the future is ready to return a particular value right
and the compile time exception is just because you have not surrounded it with try catch so let's do that so instead of doing a try catch i've just added a throws execution exception in the main uh, if you're not a fan of that you can surround it with try catch so again to reiterate future is nothing but a placeholder for the value which will arrive sometime in the future and how much time you can never be sure it will be completely based on how much time your call method takes you can also extend this particular submission for multiple tasks so like we did earlier we can have a for loop let's say we want to submit 100 tasks so i'll say for i equal to 0 to less than 100 and we can submit all those tasks and we will get 100 futures in return to store the 100 futures you can just use an array list so here i'll say future list i'll say all futures equal to new array list and as soon as i get a future during each submission i'll store them in this list right so at this point at this particular point you have 100 futures with 100 placeholders right none of them have actual values but you have 100 placeholders which will give you 100 values sometime in the future now you can do a lot of uh, unrelated operations here by the time the executor service is executing and completing all those 100 tasks it is perfectly possible by the time you come here say after 100 seconds some of the future tasks are completed and some of them are not completed here again if i use a for loop and i use the same method or the same snippet of code which will say future is equal to uh, futures all futures dot get i and i'll get the value of that future just made a tiny mistake here it needs to be future of an integer now you don't have the compile time exception once you get a result you can say um, result of future number plus i is equal to and you get the value result right so the whole point of having callables in combination with futures is to submit the tasks which return some value do some unrelated operations while those tasks are being executed and after some point in time get those values from all the futures we can visualize all this in this manner so let's say we have this service and we submitted a new task and that task is a callable task we get a, va a value a variable of type future that future is nothing but a placeholder which is immediately returned by this thread pool so the rest of the thread pool works as is but immediately when you submit the task the thread pool gives you a placeholder to keep the placeholder this box is empty there is no value within it after some point in time which is completely dependent on how your call method is implemented once the result is ready with the thread pool it will update the same placeholder which it gave you with the actual value now when this callable method is being run if your main method calls the f.get method which is a blocking method which is shown here the main thread will immediately go into the block state because at this point in time the thread pool is not yet completed the call method and it is not ready with the result yet and that is why the main thread will go into the block state and once the thread pool sets the value of that placeholder that is when the call is completed then the main thread which was blocked again goes into the runnable state and then can be run subsequently by the jvm and for this very reason you need to be extra careful when you're doing this using a for loop so suppose you have a for loop where you are submitting all these tasks multiple times to the executor service so let's say in this case we are submitting four tasks of callable nature in this case even though the third and the fourth tasks are completed so in this case the placeholder already has the values 
for task number three and task number four. And yet, if you do an f dot get on the first placeholder, the main thread will go into the block state because that particular placeholder is not yet complete. And once you have that value in that particular placeholder, then again the main thread will start running. And the same problem will occur even for the second task, which is still not complete. So again the main thread will go into the block state and it will wait until the second task is completed. And the, for the third and the fourth task, it will never go into the block state because the futures already have the values. So that's one scenario where you have to be extra careful when using for loop for the list of futures. One way to get around these problems is to use a timeout method. So get method provides an overloaded method where you can submit the maximum amount of time that you're willing to wait for the task to complete. So in this case, I can say future.get wait for a maximum amount of one second and within that time, if the future is not ready with its value, then just throw a timeout exception. And since it's a timeout exception, which is a checked exception, you have a catch method where you can do the logging or any other code you would do for the failed result. There are a couple of other methods which can be useful and one is the cancel method. So you can specifically say, I no longer want to have this task executed, so please cancel this task itself. There is one problem with this though. If you say cancel before the thread pool has started working on it, then it is well and good. Then the thread pool will immediately cancel it and will never run the task. But if your task has already started running in one of the threads, then this cancel will have no effect. Then you have to depend on the interruptibility of that particular thread. And that is why this method takes a Boolean value of true or false. If it's true, then that thread is attempted to be interrupted and interrupts in Java is a completely different ballgame uh, which we'll talk about in a separate set of videos and you can also check the current status of that future using is cancelled and is done methods and as the name suggests is cancelled returns true if the task is cancelled and is done returns true if the task is completed. Uh, note that this returns true even if the task was completed uh, as a failure if even there was an exception the task is of course never run again and that is why it returns it true so that's it for now for these videos uh, thanks a lot for listening uh, if you have any request of what uh, aspects of java you want to learn uh, then please let me know in the comments below and i'll try to create videos for that